the lives of our earliest human ancestors are nothing short of being unbelievably fascinating since they are the ones who paved the way for our extremely different world today. That is why we are back with another list today of 10 more dark things the early humans did. Before I dive into this list, you guys, I wanted to take a quick second to talk about today's video sponsor, Magellan TV. Magellan TV is a streaming service that is dedicated to documentaries and documentary series. It is perfect for true crime lovers like me as it has an unbelievably extensive catalog, but it is also perfect no matter what you're interested in, whether it's science or technology or history, Magellan TV most definitely has something for you to watch. This week I watched The Family Who Vanished, which was a 45 minute documentary that had me on the edge of my seat. It's about the Chohan family who went missing in 2003 under some extremely suspicious circumstances. This film tells their story of what all happened to them and how the investigation went and what led to the subsequent arrest and conviction of those responsible of some pretty horrific crimes. The whole documentary is full of twists and turns and I would highly, highly recommend it to anyone who is interested in crazy true crime stories. The good news is that you can go and watch it right now since Magellan TV wants to give most amazing top 10 viewers a free one month trial to check out their awesome streaming service. It is for a limited time only though, so make sure you head to the link in the description box to claim your free trial so you don't miss out. Let's get right into this list. In our number 10 spot today, we have the Masters of Fire. For a long time, it was believed that our prehistoric human ancestors were the ones who discovered fire, but as it turns out, that just isn't true. The evidence now suggests that Homo erectus, which were the first of our ancestors to walk upright and use tools, are actually the ones who can claim the title of Master of Fire. These guys were the first to learn how to produce a controlled flame and really paved the way for us to harness the power that fire can bring. Researchers have found fire pits in Africa that they have been able to date back two million years, which is absolutely wild. We certainly owe a lot to our evolutionary ancestors and all their discoveries, as well as to researchers who help us get a glimpse into what life was like all the way back then. In our number nine spot today, we have blue eyes. We have known for a while that blue eyes are a genetic mutation as we once lived in a world where everyone had brown eyes, but what I didn't know is just how far back this mutation goes. The crazy thing is that every single person today with blue eyes myself included, can be traced back to one single common ancestor from thousands and thousands of years ago. That is pretty wild when you really think about it. While blue eyes are more rare than we think, it is thought that this trait only survived because of the fact that these blue eyes were seen as highly attractive, which ensured that those with the blue eyes had no trouble finding a partner to procreate with. I am extremely grateful that things didn't go the opposite way and it wasn't considered a horrendous mutation or that there there wasn't some scary belief that those with blue eyes were cursed, because if that was the case, our world would have been a lot different. I mean, at least in terms of eye color. In our number eight spot today, we have relationship transformation. Our early human ancestors lived mostly nomadic lives, but at some point there began to be a transition into a more settled life. With this settlement came agriculture and property, which also means inheritance. This completely changed the way we looked at relationships and procreation. In the more nomadic times, monogamy wasn't really a thing because why? It wouldn't necessarily matter, and it was the norm for both males and females to have multiple sexual partners. The idea of monogamy just didn't really exist, but with the shift of civilization came the shift in this way of thinking. Now that people have homes and things, knowing who your children are becomes a lot more important to people. It's not like this shift happened overnight, but it certainly made quite the change for those who were living during these times. This undoubtedly has affected the way we live our lives and the more modern view of family and relationships. Who knows what our world would look like if this specific change never occurred. In our number seven spot today, we have sharing the earth. Evolution isn't a linear process. This might seem obvious, but it's something that not everyone has taken time to consider. This means that our early human ancestors, the early Homo sapiens, lived on earth with our even earlier evolutionary ancestors, such as the Homo floresiensis, which is more colloquially referred to as the Hobbit. That is absolute insanity to think about. 
We mostly know about Neanderthals. Thinking about these other hominins existing at the same time is very interesting. It is thought that we continued to live among them as recently as 15,000 years ago. In our number six spot today, we have man's best friend. We all know dogs are man's best friend, but just how far back does this bond go? Well, as it turns out, way farther than you may have thought. Evidence shows that around 15,000 years ago, humans began domesticating wolves, which would eventually lead us to dogs. It is thought that the Eurasian gray wolf was the first of all the wolves to be domesticated, although little is known about why this practice originated. There is speculation that it may have happened unintentionally as the early humans may have shared excess meat with the wolves, which then led to a mutually beneficial relationship or a companionship. Others thought that they were simply domesticated in order to help the early humans hunt. At the end of the day, we may never know for sure, but we do know that the earliest known dog burial dates back to 14,200 years ago. So by that time, dogs were certainly well loved by humans. In our number five spot today, we have travel. Thousands and thousands of years ago, the early humans set out to explore areas of the world that they had not been yet, but this was an extreme challenge for them as it involved crossing the sea. The settlement of Australia is the earliest evidence we have of major sea crossing, and it is considered to be one of the greatest achievements the early humans made. It is, however, unclear if the goal was to reach Australia or if these people just got caught up in wind and waves and luckily arrived arrived on land. It is assumed that the boats used were made out of bamboo, but researchers will likely never know for sure. There is some evidence that suggests that the early humans may have reached Australia as early as 120 thousand years ago, but we know for sure that it was at least 65,000 years ago, which is still quite a feat. It is highly, highly unlikely that the early humans made it on this voyage on their first try, so we can only imagine how many people lost their lives in an attempt to explore our Earth. Who knows what would have happened if they never took these risks? In our number four spot today, we have the burial practices. Every culture has their own practices for the burial of people who have passed away, and it is usually part of some sort of ceremony or ritual, but this wasn't always necessarily the case. The early humans had quite a wide variety of burial practices, with some burials and graves being extremely lavish and well decorated, with others just being plain. Researchers have found that men were buried more often than women, and infants were only buried very sporadically and sometimes not even at all. Sometimes bodies would be buried with household items or ornaments that they would have worn while still alive, but researchers just can't seem to figure out exactly why there is such a variety in burials. They have said that there seems to be very little rhyme or reason to it, so it may possibly just be one of those things that is destined to be a mystery to us modern humans. In our number three spot today, we have the Neanderthal. For a long time, it was believed that our early human ancestors killed off Neanderthals, which is what led to Homo sapiens taking over, but that is most likely not true at all. Instead, we did interbreed with them, which may have swamped their genetics, but there are some other evolutionary things that may have naturally contributed to the disappearance of Neanderthals. Scientists have been able to come up with a 3D model for what the brain of a Neanderthal would have looked like, and have been able to compare that to the brain of an early human. While Neanderthals had bigger skulls which meant bigger brains, humans have a much larger cerebellum. This is important since the cerebellum is responsible for so much, including movement and balance, to vision and learning, to language, and even mood. This means that we basically just may have had more flexible minds than Neanderthals, which allowed us to progress more quickly. We may have developed better hunting and foraging tactics quicker, as well as being able to develop technology at a higher rate. While we may never know for sure what caused the disappearance of Neanderthals, it is still a question that is highly researched and looked into, so there is a possibility that one day we'll know for sure. In our number two spot today, we have tuberculosis. Tuberculosis has been around for years and has wreaked quite a havoc on our world, but its history goes back farther than we may have thought. The disease was well documented in ancient Egypt as mummies have been found with signs of the bacteria dating back 6,000 years, but scientists have begun being able to trace it back even farther than that to the Neolithic transition. This is the time when humans began taking part in agriculture and began domesticating more animals, and for a while it was believed that tuberculosis may have originated in these animals, and then it was passed on to humans. Well, as it turns out, this may not even be the beginning of the disease, as it is now believed that it emerged in humans 70,000 years ago. It is quite a mystery how it has managed to survive this long, as it needs a human host, but it also usually kills the human who is infected with it, 
but researchers believe that around 20,000 to 30,000 years ago, the bacteria evolved to be able to go dormant in the human host, only to reemerge decades later. This information is not only crazy, but it may help researchers with the fight against the bacteria in our modern society. In our number one spot today, we have the fight for food. In the other parts of these videos, we have talked a lot about the hunting patterns of the early humans, as they obviously did things very differently than we do today. But after scientists were able to piece together what a habitat would have looked like for a human 1.8 million years ago, they have been able to really show what life was like back then. One thing we don't often think about is how much competition there would have been for the early humans to get their food. Without high powered machinery, humans are certainly not down a few pegs in terms of their ability to hunt, and there are other animals on this planet that are much better and naturally equipped. This is what led to there being multiple ways of hunting because it was a highly stressful activity for them. Sometimes it was better to just scavenge what was left over from a large carnivorous predator as it could be a huge risk going out and hunting your own meat in fear of becoming the meal. The recreation of the habitat also led researchers to learn more about the lives of the earliest humans and how they ate and drank. It is also believed that when they did go out to hunt their own meat, they most likely brought it back to safer places in order to feast on their kill. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozolowski, and we'll see you next time. Bye.